I've been in search of a better USB tester to work with USB-C and I've tried a few that you can see here at the bottom and they each have their strong points but where they really lack is software. The red one doesn't have any and the black one's got decent software but not great. That's where this AV8ZY CT2 meter comes into play. It solved a lot of my software problems and really is best in class software that I've seen. Thanks to AVHYZ for providing the CT2 for me to do testing and review with today. Here is the package that it comes in. Um, it's like an Altoid style box here. What's really nice here is they say reading the manual is the first priority and they make note of that. I think it's kind of funny. It's available on their website and I'll link to that in the description below as to and where you can pick the slide up on Amazon. It comes in this nice little foam case here and you get a print copy of the manual too. These are pretty similar. There are differences, but this is kind of like the quick start guide. This meter has some learning curve to it. It's pretty good, not perfect, but uh, definitely make sure you read the meter because you'll and the manual because you'll figure out how to do like the fast charge trigger and set some of the curves and other stuff. It's worth noting that there are other brands of this meter that seem to exist. The PowerZ KT001 looks to be the same as does the Komini KT001. The software is even called the Komini. So for this test, I'm gonna be using this Aki power bank. I reviewed this about a couple months ago and we'll use this to charge my phone and a power bank and get going. There's two versions of this meter out there. This is the more premium model with the aluminum CNC housing and it's really nice. I'm used to these meters that have open PCB construction, they're okay. They always feel a little bit vulnerable and I'm afraid about damaging them. The uh, aluminum CNC casing on this CT2 really solves that problem. On the back too then you've got some nice displays to tell you what's going on. This meter does work for USB-A and USB-C. So you've got USB-A in and out. You've got USB-C in and out. Uh, you've got your connection, micro USB connection for the PC as well as a multi-key that jogs left, right, and then clicks up and down, and then your PD on and off uh, switch down here at the bottom. So this meter does have dimming control built into it, and I have not figured out how to turn that off. Kind of to just show the display here. While this meter does work with um, without the software, it really is designed best for the software. So let's go through just the standalone part, and then I will uh, go over the software as well. Okay, I've got my phone plugged in here, and hopefully you can see the meter here. I've shut off half my video lights or so. And uh, my phone's fairly low power, and it, you can see it's charging your four volts 4.9 volts, uh, 1.5 amps, uh, 7.8 total watts there. I It scrolls through the different screens here and it's keeping track of how long the phone has been plugged in, total amp hours. This is all fairly standard stuff. Uh, this screen shows you what type of uh, connections it's doing. It's charging on C right now. It's not using any Qualcomm quick charge. I'm not sure what the TC is but it's a protocol and communication language. It's not the charger itself, but this shows how picky USB-C charging can be. I've had to reset my charger here a couple times to get it in sync and to charge a little bit faster. At first, it wouldn't only charge two watts, and the meter uh, showed me that. Phone's pretty discharged too, so it might also be charging slow while the battery comes up to uh, temp here. If you jog to the left with the meter here, you can see you can trigger fast charging which I don't want to do. Um, if I jog to the right, it allows me to record a curve and I can say capture the new curve. And this is gonna log the data then to the um, meter itself here. And I'll just let it go for, oh, let's say uh, 10 seconds here. Then I'm gonna hit stop. I can go back, shows me a summary here. Then I can hit diagram. It uh, graph, again, not something that you probably need on the meter itself but on the software this is super nice so then you can go in and exit okay i want to walk through the install process of the ct2 meter this file was on the avhzy website and it's the Kamini app here i've extracted it so i'm going to start it up here and i have my ct2 meter connected via micro USB to USB to my laptop and I've already previously installed the driver to make this work but the driver installation process is really easy you go to this install driver box here in the middle second option and it launches a driver installer and you walk through the process of next 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 and very simple from there since I've already installed it I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel here so here's the software itself let me go over a few things. I don't have my iPad plugged in right now, so it's not actually charging. But if you did, you get live voltage, amperage, and wattage numbers here, along with what 
you've got on your D-pins. I can hit the screenshot button and it's pulling what the screen of the meter itself is displaying and that's kind of handy. Over here you've got your graph settings. Um, it's going to record one second and the length is two points so it's like a one by two graph. You've got your summary when you're recording. We'll show that here in a minute. You can run this meter and capture curve information without having it plugged into a computer and then when and save it to the meter itself and when you do it that way you've got four slots here and I can click on one of those and say get list double click it and it will go pull that off the device and show you on the graph itself what happened and you can sh record the summary here I only let this record for a few seconds so it's um, not very long not very much data here but you can see it shows a summary of that or on this right hand side you've got a PD listen mode here and I'm still learning on that what I'm gonna do is hit start on the graph and plug it into my iPad and have it start charging. We can see when I plugged it in there, voltage dropped a little bit, current shot all the way up, and um, it's starting to charge. So what's nice about this is it's capturing it in real time, and this will run for a significant amount of time. I've ran it for several hours at a time, and I think it can even go past 24 hours. You can see how many points it's recording. You can see total capacity, energy, uh, how much voltage you're running on the platform, the time you're recording at. And you can come in here in graph settings too. So I can pick the width. Um, I can put in a title. So I'm going to go iPad charging. Say I don't want to include this uh, green line on here showing energy proportions. I'd say OK. And it changes the graph in real time. So say this was enough of the graph that I needed for it. I could stop. Then I've got some options here. Under File Save, I can save this entire session and save it and then reopen it later if I wanted to. I can export. I can export this data as a CSV file. So let's just call it Test Data and let's go take a look at that. So here is my test data that I just recorded. You can see it's pretty nice. You've got voltage, amperage, wattage current basically all the numbers you want and they're formatted pretty nice too you can take this and make a mean graph with it let's say you liked this graph you could of course grab a screenshot if you wanted to or you can export the image and what's nice is they tell you have default resolutions in here popular so most of my videos are 1080p so I'm gonna pick 1080p but if I wanted 2k 4k 8k it's all there but say 1080p is good enough and this button here in Chinese is OK. I just haven't translated this screen. It's going to save it as a bitmap, test, data, or just test. Boom. There's your graph pre-made, ready to go. Time's nicely oriented out. You've got your voltage amperage, legend. What more could you ask for? You can open those save sessions, and you can open a PD stream. Under your advanced, you've got some neat stuff. You've got version info. Tells you what version of software you're using and the version on your hardware. When I plugged in my hardware for the first time, it told me I was out of date with the software and wanted me to upgrade, so I hit OK and it walked me through that process. Worked first time, no problem. But you can also manually do it here. You've got a communication log, you've got language, you've got the ability to save a screenshot, and that's a saving the screenshot of this little screen down here, not the graph or the entire screen. You can customize the logo, like a pre-boot logo if you wanted to. It tells you the parameters you need to do that here. It even lets you pick how long you want to display that logo. You've got your themes, which is your color palette for the device itself. If you wanted to change your wattage to be purple instead of red, you can do that. And then you've got support and update, which launches the website. I've looked at a lot of charging meters and a lot of different software, and a lot of the meters are pretty good, but none of the software comes close to what you've got here on the CT2. This right now is by far the best software hardware combo I have seen, and really for me, is doing basically 100% of what I want to do automatically. The only thing it could be better maybe is if it was Bluetooth, but uh, I don't mind plugging in a wire to get all this, all these features. And it's something I really recommend if you're into testing power banks, seeing how your electronics do. It's useful for flashlight testing and just various other things. This is now going to be my main meter, I think. So let me know what you think of it. I'll have links in the description below. And if you've enjoyed this content, smash that like button, subscribe. And I can't wait to see you back for a special flashlight review next week.